All right, hello everybody. Um, this is just a quick little tutorial thing that um, I couldn't find anywhere else, so I figured this might help someone. So uh, this is going to be transferring mini disc uh, tracks from, uh, well, obviously your mini disc onto your computer. This should work with basically any uh, NetMD device that has, like, you know, a USB port on the device, at least theoretically. So you don't need any sort of special rare players or anything for it. So, uh, I guess let's get started. So first of all, you're going to want to obviously plug in power on your, um, mini disc device, and you're going to want to put a disc in there. I've already done that. So we're going to hit connect. Also, the, uh, thing I'm using is Web Mini Disc Pro. There will be a link in the description to that. Um, I'm going to hit connect, and it would have, if I hadn't already done this, it would have popped up with, like, you know, which device you want to use and it should only be one it should be the mini disc player uh one thing i will note however something that might help you for some reason it wasn't working with my um front usb ports and so if you aren't getting it with your front usb ports you might want to try something either on a different hub or plugged in directly into the back of your computer just try different usb ports it should work um you will want to use Zadig to install the uh, Win USB driver. Um, I should show how to do that. All right, and here we have Zadig. Uh, just wanted to show this real quick um, because this is how you will need to uh, make sure that the computer recognizes your main disk player because more than likely it won't recognize it just right out of the box. So um, what you're going to want to do is go to Options, List All Devices, and then you're going to want to find in this case, NetMD Walkman, you're going to find that. So obviously, it'll probably say no driver over here. Um, you're going to want to change that to the WinUSB driver. You are going to want to hit install. It'll take a little bit. If it seems frozen, it's not. Don't worry. Just give it a minute. And that should be about it. Last thing I will say is, again, I just want to stress, if it isn't being detected, even after all this, you might be using one of the front USB ports or a port that it doesn't like for some reason. That happened to me a couple times when I used the front USB ports. Try using a different hub or try plugging it into the back of the computer. That's what I did and then it worked fine. Anyway, I have two mini discs and this is going to be important. One is in stereo and one is in mono. Um, this is the stereo mini disc and what you're going to do, um, if you want the easy version, you're going to click here. You're going to Enable homebrew mode ripping in main UI. You're going to click here and you're going to click download, and that should basically be it. Yeah, you can download tracks via USB. Please keep in mind that this functionality is not stable. Uh, you use this technically at your own risk. I did not have any trouble with it, so it should be fine. So you're going to click start download. You're going to upload the homebrew code to uh, the mini disc player and then it's going to record the track and if seeking keeps popping up that's what mine did it's completely fine and so it's going to do that i'm going to skip ahead until it's complete so yeah this will take a little bit um it's not instant but it's certainly faster than especially depending on the uh size of the track certainly faster than doing it over analog audio and personally i think a more direct connection and a more direct rip is always the best in my opinion. All right, and then obviously it's gonna um, open up to a file browser. As you can see, I've already uh, transferred this track, so I'm just going to uh, close this, but you would wanna save it. Also note that it is saving as a .aea file. We'll uh, get to that in just a second. Okay, and there you go. If you want to export the table of contents as well, you would enter homebrew mode, and yes, acknowledge that you know, you are taking a risk ultimately when you do some of these more homebrew type uh, transfers. And so what you would do is you would go and you would download a table of contents. Or if you just wanted to do both at the same time, you would go to toolbox and hit archive disk. Um, and that's how you do it, at least for manually recorded disks. Next thing we'll do real quick is we will go into Audacity because there is something I want to show you in there. So uh, here we are in Audacity. I'm actually going to, I, I don't recommend keeping the uh, tracks as their .aea files, especially if it's a mono track and you'll understand why in a second. I would recommend 
re-exporting these, just dragging them into Audacity, and then just re-exporting them as flax. All right, and here you go. Here's your uh, raw track, your raw output. Again, I would personally go and export this as a flack and just that would be all I'd do with it. Um, you might notice that some of the peaks get really high um, depending on the recording quality. That's not a problem of the actual player or the homebrew method or what have you. Um, that's more a problem of just, you know, if the recording quality wasn't good to begin with. So you can export this as a flack or a wave or what have you. One other thing I will mention, um, while I'm not going to show it here, I do want to just um, bring it up. You know, one of the mini discs I transferred was in mono, but when I tried to play it, for some reason, it was only half the runtime. But when I actually import it into Audacity, it uh, appeared again with the full runtime, but in mono, I don't know exactly what the deal was with that, but regardless, here you go. This will help anyone if they're, they feel like they're going nuts. Why is like half their runtime just not there? Okay, there we go. And again, obviously, um, th the reason this is so loud is just because it was, you know, that's how it was recorded. Uh, if you want to try cleaning this up, by all means, go right ahead. But that goes beyond the scope of this tutorial. All right, so that should end things off. Again, I will leave links to Web Mini Disc Pro, Audacity, and Zadig if you um, want to go download those if you don't have them already. I hope this has helped someone. Thank you all for watching, and take care. It won't be long before I become a puppet. Patrick, what are you doing? It's been so long since last I've seen a star lost to this monster, the man behind the slaughter. Said you. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I had to do to entertain myself when I'm trying to record something. If I'm not trying to record something, I just play a game. Nope. Can't do that. Gotta keep it on the same screen.